Hi friends, in this video I'm going to share with you 10 things you can do to make your Canva website look beautiful and functional both on desktop and on mobile and stay tuned for number 6 because ooh, is a good one. Now, as you may know, I create content for real estate agents, and this is a Canva website template that is also available for sale on my Etsy shop. So give it a looky-loo. It might just save you some time and brain calories. Now, as real estate agents, it is very important that we make sure we are compliant with the branding of our brokerage. Now, here at eXp Realty, agents are able to create their own personal brand, but we also need to make sure that we represent eXp by having all of eXp's logos on all our our marketing material now sometimes that can be quite a lot where you have your logo your face and then your brokerage logo and what i found is that to consolidate everything you can create what's called i call it a profile logo gif which consolidates all of that into one element so here i have my gif on the side up here i'm gonna put it on up here so let's try that again and as you see here it goes from my face to my logo to exp to the wolf pack if you know you know and if you want to know scan that code but essentially if you want to learn how to create this logo profile gif i do have another tutorial that you can watch on my channel which i will link in the cards above and in the description box down below because we can now create transparent gifs on canva hallelujah now at this point i would delete the other logos on the side and if we go into preview we will see that this is what it looks like now as of the recording of this video we're not yet able to customize canva's navigation bar up here so most likely many people will like to have their logo up in the navigation bar but we're not yet able to do that on canva yet so maybe coming soon i don't know if we go to the mobile view this is what that would look like and then this on the side here is the hamburger menu which you can see and it just goes off to the side here that's my number one tip to kind of just consolidate all of your branding and marketing material and speaking of navigation i'm sure you're curious as to how to do that now in this case you want to go down here to this grid view and essentially what you whatever you name the pages is going to make up your navigation now you'll see here some pages are not listed with anything it's just a blank blank space there it's noted by one two now you see on these other pages page three i have about page four your game plan page five service areas and again as mentioned what whatever page you label is going to make up your navigation now to turn on navigation we want to close out grid view go up to preview and at the bottom here you'll see this little toggle that says include a navigation you want to make sure that is toggled on with that check mark there and on desktop your navigation will be listed at the top and then on mobile it will be listed in this hamburger menu and of course you can test it out in the preview mode so if i go to service areas it will just bring you down to that specific page on the website if i go to reviews it will just pull us down to that particular page as well let's talk designing so here i follow something that's called rule of thirds if you will now on the services page i have three different blocks that contain a button here so this one here this is services if we scroll down to the listing section we have one two and three and then a second row of one two and three obviously if you had more listings you can pull this page down and include another row of your listings and open houses if we scroll all the way down to testimonials you'll see that i have one two and three and then a, an additional button down here that will allow you to go to more reviews so i think having that one two and three just makes it easy on the eye to see and it's just it's just nice and pretty you know what i mean sorry for the interruption let me drop this introduction i sell canva templates on etsy for my real estate agent besties i don't have a beat on this track because i am not a rapper a singer all i do is help agents prosper scan this code and you'll be the winner or find the link to my etsy shop in the description box down below subscribe and let's get back to the video throughout this particular design i have more views or different kind of buttons that we can hyperlink to different external sites resources forms things like that now in this case this button here is simply just 
a rectangle that I've put a gradient on, text hyperlinked and added a additional shadow underneath to kind of give it a 3D effect. And so very quickly, let me show you how to make a button that looks like that. So in this case, I am just going to open up just a new page so we can just see that. If you go to your elements, you can go to your shapes here, grab a square, you can make it into a rectangle. You can come in here and round out the corners if you'd like. Now, one thing when you are creating your buttons, I recommend that all of your clickable hyperlink buttons have the same look so people will know that is indeed a button. Again, as mentioned, I have a gradient on this particular button and to create a gradient, just add new color, go from a solid color over to gradient here. And then you can go about adding multiple colors in here and then choosing the direction of where your gradient is going. Now I already have gradients already within this page here. So this is what that would look like. Again, we can use this shape as a text box. So here we can put button, <laughs> button. And then if we just highlight that piece of text, we can go in here make it bolded, change the color out so it's easier to read, obviously make it bigger. And then if you wanted to, if you're fancy, you can add a shadow, just go to your elements, look up shadow. And you'll find a bunch of things like this. So if, let's say I like this one, it's gonna be really big. I obviously need to zoom it down like that. And just obviously put it right underneath to make it look like it's popping out of the page. Maybe just put this shadow just slightly underneath. You want to make sure the shadow is behind the button. So I want to put that layer down below. There you go. You have a button. And then if you want to hyperlink this button, in this case, what I would do is I would group those elements together. And then we have those three dots there. Click more, go down to where are you? Where are you? Link are you link or maybe not ungroup click the button itself more and then that link appears okay okay don't group it don't do that you can just link it first and then group the element and i'll show you why you would want to group the element in a later tip but let's say we are linking this and i want to not be here but again three dots link and it's giving me this recent page tab here. I don't want that. I want the screen behind it, which is this one where you can actually put your link in there. And I have a shortcut for link tree here. So I'm just going to put space and you would just hit done. It's going to give you an underline, which I particularly do not like. So I always remove the underlying. Now there is that button. Now here is the next tip. We can make this button even cooler so after you hyperlink your button we can then go in and group this okay and we can animate this button so go up to animate and then we can choose a rise a pan a fade but i typically either like a pop baseline you know one of these pop something like that and you can choose the direction of where the button is coming from you can choose the speed make it fast make it slow but there you go that's a hyperlink button with a shadow and an animation this is a little baby micro tip as you saw i struggled to hyperlink this button with a link now instead let me ungroup this let me remove this link because typically when i'm designing let me delete that when i'm designing I don't go through the hassle of click clicking the three dots to hyperlink. Simply what I do in this case, let me grab a random link. This is the demo of this site here. I'm going to grab the URL. I know you can't see it, but it's up there. And in this case, what I would do is select all the elements. Okay. I would group it. In this case, what I do is paste on the link. So in this case, once you have the element selected, just do command or control V depending on your system and paste on the link just like that. I remove the underline and boom, bang. It's a clickable button, okay? And if you wanna test it, go into the preview. I gotta scroll all the way down to the bottom, down here. And if we click button, it should open up that 
specific external link that we hyperlinked that button to. So there you go. Let us continue on with more clickable buttons. Now, as I showed you, you can hyperlink a button to an external website or URL. And on this case, what I want to do in this example is if someone clicks on this buy or sell button, it, I want them to be pushed down to a specific page or specific section on this website. So in this case, this button here, the buy button has been hyperlinked to page 11, which is the buy page, because if I go to the grid view down here, the buy page is page number 11, which, which has more information about the home buying process and my menu of home buying resources. So in this case, if I go to the second page here, let's say this wasn't hyperlinked. Let's say I made the, the square, I put my text in here, and now I want to hyperlink this button to a specific page. Click on the button. In this case, we will need to go to the three dots and then go to link. And this should open up this menu here. And you can see here pages in this document. So I have to go scroll, 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 scroll down to page 11 because I want to hyperlink this page. So click that there. And then it's hyperlinked to page 11, click done. And of course, it's going to give us that underline. That's ugly. Remove it. <laughs> and then go to preview and we can actually test this bad boy. So we want to click this button. Bye. It should pull them down to page number 11, which is the buying with success page. Isn't that awesome? Now, this stuff is kind of nitty gritty. It might not be important to you, but it is to me. Now, when I'm designing these kind of websites, I want to make sure that the site has good flow. There's good spacing that's maintained from each page to page and nothing is squished together. Now, you'll notice here I have what is called these kind of image images or frames that are empty and I use them as placeholders. That way, when Canva is going from desktop to mobile response, when it's squished down to vertical, nothing is, I guess you could say, squished together. So if I will show you this, if I remove these, well, first, let me show you what it would look like normally. So if you scroll down, you can see here that I have good main spacing up here, down there. If I go into the mobile here, I have good, nice spacing from the first page into the second page, and it's not squished together. But if I remove this empty frame, and this empty frame, what's going to happen? I am going to go into preview and then we're going to see, see that it's very subtle, but as you can see here, there's no more spacing from here and there's no more additional spacing here. Personally, that bugs me. I don't like that. So I just use frames from the elements. You can go into, I guess, the elements tab here and then scroll down to frames and then you just you manually just have to put this in the background but i'm just going to remove that and just undo because i already have mine there and it's okay to leave them empty because once you put them in preview or you publish the website you're not going to see this empty frame it's just again as i said a place holder now you'll also notice that i have this serrated grid this is what's called the margin and to turn that on i go to file up here, then go into settings and then show margins. And this just makes sure that I am putting my prevalent information in the center and I'm not too all over the place. Again, nitty gritty stuff might not be important to you, but it is to me. And if I go down to another specific page here, let's say the selling process, what you'll notice here is that this just looks like you know, like a normal page. But if I click on this and I delete the picture out of here and click on the background here and delete the picture out of here, this is actually what's called a grid. And again, I use this to maintain the spacing of my website when it goes from desktop to mobile. And because this is a frame, which you'll see here, or sorry, a grid, which you see here in the elements, I have the grid section here. Typically, I just use just the one by two or two by one or you know the half the half grid the two grids one and two and i just put i fill one with a image and i fill one with just again you can leave this blank if you want to or fill it in with a color and then drag and drop you know an image into this background here make this one here make it white so it will also fit the 
my goodness. Hold on, hold on, technical difficulties. Click on this, go here, and make it white. There you go. And that's what that would look like in this case. And again, this just helps you to maintain spacing and the margins. And because when you go from desktop to mobile, essentially what Canva is doing, it is essentially stacking, sorry, stacking whatever is on the left side onto the right side. So if we go into the preview, we can see here that on our mobile, if we go down to the selling section here, sell, we can see here that this first grid is stacked right on top the second one. So that just helps to, again, help Canva understand how to stack the content accordingly. Again, nitty gritty, not that important, but is very important to me. Now, if you're a long time watcher of my channel, thank you. You would also know that I love me some video embeds. And that's just simply taking your public YouTube video and then embedding it onto your design here. So it's interactive and playable when you publish this site. So very simply, again, go to any video you have, grab the URL at the top here. I know you can't see it because it's hidden, but go once you have that go into your design and very simply if there's nothing in the background you can just right click and hit paste just like that or if you're struggling to embed your video you can simply go over here to this kind of quick actions you see this this is canva assistant or if you click on that it'll open this up or if you're if you're good with your canva or sorry your keyboard shortcuts, the backslash key, the one with the question mark, this one will open up the Canva Magic Assistant. And if you look for embed, you can click on this here and simply paste in the URL of your YouTube video, hit enter and same thing. And then of course you just, you just situate it right where you need it to be. And of course, if we go into the preview, we can see that both on the mobile version if you're real estate playable go to desktop agents and you found this video playable there you go now another quirky little thing you can do here is if you are a user of calendly you can also embed that specific um, invitation interface if you will so hold on let me scroll down to this context page here and quite simply, you can either paste it somewhere on here or you can create a new page. Now, in this case, I have this specific call that I have already created. If you're not familiar with Calendly, I do have a tutorial that you can check out on my channel. It talks about Calendly. Essentially, I would take the link up here, copy link, go into my Canva design. And again, we can right click on the page here and just put paste. Give it a second might not be totally fitting on this exact page here but you can see here if i just zoom out this is what that should look like now if we go to preview scroll all the way down or hit contact then your person if you will is able to whoever is viewing this site your potential client they can then you know book a call with you directly from here rather than to have to click the link to calendly open up a new tab this that and the other this just makes it easy to, to just have that interface right there and then so they can easily book a call with you and with calendly you can have them select a time and a date based on your availability you can have them um, answer some preliminary questions so you are best prepared for that specific meeting and there you go. And again, probably not the best place to put it there. You can make it as its own individual page, but that's how I would use the Calendly embed. Or if you don't really like that look, you can do what I did in this case. I just took a button here and I just hyperlinked Calendly to this button. Again, click the button, Command or Control V, and then it will be hyperlinked, remove the underline. And in this case, if we go to preview and click on that button, it will open up yes a, a new tab which will take them to this page so you decide what you want to do but i just wanted to show you that that was an option this is another technical tip that might be overlooked by some but again very important to me now if you notice on this page kind of going back to the rule of thirds thing we have to make sure that when we design 
for desktop that it will translate the design into the mobile view as per the website responsiveness, if you will. Now this looks fine on desktop. I mean, I kind of messed it up a little bit to show you the effect of why this tip is important on desktop looks fine. If we go to mobile, go down to the refuse tab, we can see that this is kind of okay, off-centered, off-centered, and it's just kind of a hot mess because that more button should not be there. So the way that I avoid this kind of catastrophe, if you will, is to make sure that I go in and not do that, <laughs> but here I have all these elements. So go to position, you can go into layers, you can see all of the elements in that make up this particular page. Now, what I wanna do in this case is to just align everything so it's nice, it's perfect, it's straight, and as it should be. So in this case, I am just going to click this image, hold the shift key, click and click to select. I'm just going to go into a range, I'm going to tidy it up. And now that that is done, I'm going to then just click out of there, select that image, the star here, the text box, go back to positions, just center it up and do the same thing here. Center it up just like that. And typically you wanna make sure all of these stars are also aligned. All of this text is, let's do the top here and let's push it down kind of like that. Okay, so once you have that all centered, I'm going to then group this section, select, select, and group, select, hold the shift key, select, select, group. So now we have one, two, and three. Now I'm going to select each group. So hold this down, click this first, hold the shift key, select, and select each group, go into positions, tidy it up. And actually, I want this to be aligned just like that. And once you have that, you're like, mm, I'm done, right? Not yet. What we're going to do in this case is just for extra precaution, what I like to do is then just go ahead and select all of those elements. And I'm going to go up here to lock up here. This is just going to lock everything down so nothing moves when we go from desktop to mobile. And if we go into preview, we can test this design theory. Let's go into desktop, go down to reviews here. Looks fine, looks good. If I extend this, that's what that would look like. Go into to our mobile view, go down into reviews, and we should now see that everything should be perfectly aligned and nothing has moved. Kind of underrated, but highly recommend that you utilize this one simple trick and tool to make sure that, again, the beauty of your design is translated on both ends. If you're having a kind of a design block and you don't really know how to design your Canva website or landing page in a structured way, what you can do is create a blank page like this and then go into design and go into layouts here and Canva has a bunch of different page layouts that you can start off with so let's say perhaps this one here and you can just build and stack as you go something like that and you see here that they also use the, th the rule of thirds or just the three th three elements and this will help you again just have a kickstart as to how to build and structure your Canva website. If you're really not design savvy and you don't want to create anything from scratch, well, shameless plug, you can always purchase my template off of my Canva, it's not my Canva website, my Etsy shop. You can find multiple Canva website templates on my Etsy shop in multiple colors. But obviously, if you want to utilize Canva's templates, you very well can. So go into the design tab here. And what you can do is basically mix and match your pages so you can have a design that's unique to you. So in this case, if you go to design up here, make sure in templates, you can look for real estate. And just, you can see here, ooh, that this is seven pages, this has five pages, but if you click any of them open, what's gonna happen, in this case, I'm gonna create a, an additional page. You can see here that these are the pages here. So let's say you like the first page of this design, okay? And then you're not really feeling anything else. So you can go back and let's say, again, we look for real estate. 
for anything and let's see here you want to go to this one and you're like okay i like this page and then as you can see here you can mix and match and stack and start to build out a a again a website template that is unique to you so i just thought i would let you know the 411 one thing you may have noticed on my particular template is that I have animations in place. So if I scroll down, you see that button moved, these sections have moved, this moves in, and these are just simply animations that I have put onto just specific elements, not particularly everything because I find that too many app animations can either slow down your site or just, just make it too much. And we don't want it to be too much. We just want it to be just enough so in this case i have mostly just added animations to the clickable buttons and sometimes the text here so again you can use animations on anything in this case if i click on this text box you can see here let's go to positions layers i have grouped this text box together and you can see here that i have the rise animation which goes up or you can choose the direction as well now in this case if i scroll down to this section here i believe i may have clicked on let's go to positions go to the background here and you know what actually i think what i've done in this case because i grouped these elements individually what i've done is i just hit the i go to the layers tab in the positions i select these three three things here so whole click select one hold the shift key and then select the other ones and what i've done is as you see here we have the rise animation and so here's the rise animation which just goes up so i just animated those particular sections there and same thing down here with this image i have i selected hold the shift key select the other one or not in this case because this one is actually a grid so what i did in this case is just pan it so i panned it this way like that and then this button comes up maybe a better example would be down here these buttons again i select one hold the shift key and then select all of them and you can see here i already have the pan animation but i have the pan animation going this way so it's like it comes in like this and it looks quite quite interesting quite cool now this this particular ipad mock-up if you go into positions click on that you can see here that i have the pan animation i mean use them sparingly don't use too much but again just use it to add some visual interest to your website and i hope you give it a try if you made it to the end of this video then you know what it is you know what to do yeah comment down below hashtag and group so i know you are a real one and if you would like to learn how to make a multiple page website on canva then i highly recommend you check out this video right over here and if you're ready get ready to click in three two one